The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings programs and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and this is one of the prized members of my own personal retro handheld gaming collection. Uh, this is Coleco's Electronic Quarterback. Now, when people think retro handheld games, they think Game Boy, Game Gear, maybe the Atari Lynx, stuff like that. But for me, this was the jam between the Coleco games, the Mattel games, maybe even the Tiger games in the early 90s. That really sealed the deal for handheld gaming for me. Very simple controls, very simple displays, but hours and hours of entertainment. We didn't have the luxury of 8-bit cartridges or dot matrices with stereo sound. No, nah, we had an LED matrix with a handful of 7 Series Logic chips, and that was good enough for us. So I was thinking, you know, these are a lot of fun, and I kind of want to like build my own, kind of make a new spin on this old kind of aesthetic here. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a handheld game in the style of these old late 70s, early 80s LED based displays. And we're going to do it with a little bit of a modern twist. So let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, so now that we've kind of got an idea of what's going on inside here, we need to design our own game here. So probably just going to build this all on one board. We've got our board there, uh, and then we'll have some kind of an LED matrix there. And instead of trying to come up with, you know, ways to kind of do like seven series logic and, you know, this and that and trying to program it in assembly and that's just going to be too much. So simplify things by using an Arduino Nano. We will run the matrix and basically all the associated controls from the Arduino and then course controls we will need to have uh, some level of controls based on whatever game I end up designing and you know do something like that once I have all that in place uh, let's see there to there to there uh, oh and a uh, and a battery of some sort and of course that'll have to go in so that's the basic idea so we need to do the matrix we need to actually program the game and we need to do controls and a uh, battery power supply in the case. I think that's it. Let's get this started. I'll do the matrix first. Uh, well, I'll kind of do a little bit of uh, noodling on the game, work on the matrix based on that, and then of course the controls. And then we will go from there. So as you can see inside the retro arcade kit that I have here, these are really, it's just a bunch of LEDs in a grid, a matrix. We have to come up with some way to turn on each LED in turn or the ones that we want on at any given time. So the problem is um, we only have so many pins on an Arduino. So we need to figure out a way to be able to control a vast quantity of LEDs with only so many pins. And we do this through a principle called multiplexing. Now, there's several ways to do uh, multiplexing. A lot of devices you'll see will use a combination of a shift register, uh, something like a 595 shift register with a decade counter to kind of choo 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 on off uh, the different uh, the different LEDs in turn, you know, so you'll have a shift register that controls columns and then a decade counter that'll just shift through the rows in turn for, on clock cycles. We're not going to do anything that complicated today. Uh, we're really just going to keep this rock basic simple because I like rock basic simple. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know. Um, but I like rock basic simple. But right now we're just going to design our own 
basic uh, sort of matrix. So you have essentially, we're gonna look at something. This is of course not to scale because I'm gonna do an eight by eight matrix, but just to show you the principle, we have a four by four matrix. So what we need to do is we need to power uh, each LED in turn. The simplest way to do this would be to build a pair of rails. So we have a rail here and we have a rail here, a bus, if you will. So we have five volts here and we have ground on this side. And they're of course not connected. So if we put five volts onto this row and we put a column, we ground this column, then this LED will light up. If we light up this row, this one will light up and so on and so forth. Or if we change the column, you know, we'll get a different one in the a different column lit up. The problem is we can't do, you know, a whole bunch of them all at one time. So we have to kind of shift through them. And in order to do that, the easiest way to turn on and off anything with electronics is through the use of a transistor. So we have, we'll just put a little transistor there and we'll put a little transistor boop, 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 there. Uh, and we'll do the same for those. So we have the, um, the base, the collector, and the emitter. So we're gonna uh, connect the collector to the five volt bus. And then when the base is activated, when we send a signal to the base, it will flow through and the emitter will go out here to a row of LEDs that are you know, connected in series. And then same, same over here, we'll have a signal from the base. We'll have the collector this time attached to our column of LEDs and our emitter goes to ground. Thus, when the signal hits here, it takes the electricity coming in this way, pulls it out this way and goes into ground because everything is, you know, polarized. It's, it, they're, it's two diodes put together. So that's how that works. We need some way, if we have a constant value here, we have a constant ground here. Uh, we need some way to drive a signal as we need them. And of course, those will go to two different pins on our Arduino. And then in the code, we can actually put this together and make it do all the blinking lights. Let's get this all wired up. Let's see what it looks like. And then let's write a little bit of test code, make sure it works, and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, so got our matrix all uh, assembled here and nicely uh, nicely soldered, if I do say so myself. Uh, next thing I gotta do is build the driver circuit. So, and even before I get to do that, I've got to get um, resistors. I need to get some current limiting resistors in here so that we don't pop our LEDs because that will be a pain to fix. I need to figure out what value uh, goes in here. So um, good old Ohm's law. So we're going to use R equals uh, V minus V lead over current. Uh, let's see. So resistor value is unknown. Um, we are using an Arduino. So that is going to be five volts uh, input. And just a quick check on the uh, data sheet for the LEDs finds that they are uh, 2.5. 1 volts forward voltage, and then we divide that by our uh, forward current, which is 10 milliamps. So 0. Point, that's a centi milli. There we go. 10 milliamps. That gives us uh, 290. Uh, so we'll grab a uh, grab a resistor that's close to that, and we'll throw that in the mix. So let me solder those in place and then we'll get on to the next thing. All 
Okay, so I got a quick little bit of Arduino code here, uh, just defining all of my pins and then running through an instruction set that lights up all of the LEDs, tells it to turn on one transistor, turn on a corresponding transistor, light up a light, and it cycles through all of the LEDs. So as you see, it is working now. So I'm thinking for my game, you got, uh, yeah, you've got you know, like your football, your baseball, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm thinking we've got better components. We've got better capabilities. Why don't we make something a little more complex? And I'm thinking maybe like a very abstracted version of something like Space Invaders or Galaga, you know, like a side scrolly kind of space shooter thing. So Julius Roberts of the Tasmanian Linux Users Group has written an example code uh, for his version of an abstracted uh, form of Space Invaders on an LED matrix. So I've taken that and I've kind of reworked it a little bit. Uh, there were some problems in the code and I've, I've kind of fixed them and I've adapted them to this larger LED matrix that I've put together, but I'm not going to run through all of the code here, but I'll give you some of the highlights. Essentially, we have a little intro sequence and then we get into the game and what it's doing is it determines the amount of display cycles based on the uh, position of the potentiometer, the beginning of the game, and then that determines the difficulty of the game. And uh, of course, you know, the more difficult, the faster everything moves. You've got eight waves, essentially. I'm gonna play around with a little bit of that, probably make a few more uh, different waves just to give it some more variety because I've got a bigger grid to work with. Then what we're doing is plotting the location of the ship, plotting the location of the bad guys, and then uh, when you push the button, it then uh, shoots the little laser kind of thing and then uh, determines if it's a hit. Uh, if it's a hit, it removes the, the bad guy. And then uh, when all the bad guys are done, it uh, ends the game. That's essentially how the code works. Now, I'll put my version of the code as well as a link to the original code on element14.com, link down in the doobly-doo, uh, so you can play around with it and build your own. In the meantime, let's get this put onto the Arduino, and then uh, we'll put this thing in a case and we'll be done. You say they come in different wave formations. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Cool. So now you see, it just kind of comes across the screen, and if it hits the bottom... So here we have our very own homebrew, retro-styled, abstracted, arcade action in the palm of your hand, electronic game. Attack of the Surfarians. This has been a lot of fun. I have enjoyed this. This is something that does not look like it would be out of place in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, you know, something like you might see it in the background of like Stranger Things or, or E.T. Uh, 
just a cool little simple game that's going to play for hours uh, riding in the back seat of the car, going to see your relatives, because that's what you did back in the day. Anyway, it is a little devoid of artwork, however. And I'm not the greatest graphic artist, so if you've got an eye for that kind of stuff, hit me up on the community at element14.com forward slash presents, link down in the doobly-doo. Get a hold of me, and I would love to put your artwork on this guy right here. While you're there, uh, check out element14.com forward slash suggestion box if you got ideas for anything you'd like to see us build here on the show. In the meantime, my name is Matthew. Until next time, tally ho, y'all. Mm -hmm.